Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all starting to enjoy the warm season, but it is currently raining here in Detroit today, but that's no worries as we can definitely have some fun inside with some street lights. So like my Pemco video I just did about those two Pemco fixtures, I also have two Hubble fixtures that I'd like to review with you guys um, as a two-parter. So what I'll do is I'll just start with this one. And then I'll go ahead and record uh, this one next in another video. Of course, if I were to do one video of these, that would probably take a really long time to film uh, and edit and stuff. So I'm going to make this another little two-parter for you guys. These right here are the Hubble RM and RL fixtures. Um, these are some really nice, um, really obscure modern fixtures that a lot of people do know about but not too, too many people have them, and that's just because these fixtures really weren't too popular. And really, these were only ever really found mostly in parking lots as like store lighting, or like sometimes I'll see them used as like a carpool parking uh, lot lights. So you really don't see these uh, used in a lot of different situations. However, there are some examples out there of these uh, actually used as just regular utility street lights. Now, one thing to mention, about uh, these two fixtures and like I said they're modern obscure fixtures is that um, these fixtures are now discontinued um, I think they were discontinued right around the uh, mid 2010s so probably around like 2014 or 15 um, and these fixtures I believe were first made around the 1980s so um, during their entire I'd say it's the 80s 90s 2000s probably about 40 year run um, these fixtures really haven't been so popular but they definitely made it into modern day but sadly now they don't make them anymore as of uh, as LED is pretty much just everything now when it comes to lighting I think now is a really good time to actually see if these Hubble fixtures are really worth it for the lighting industry so now I'm not going to get into their history too much as there's not really a lot of history actually on these fixtures what I will do is I'll go ahead and put, if I can, in the link below, a PDF file so that you guys can actually view these fixtures because luckily the PDFs and ordering information for these are available so that you guys can actually take a look at some of the specs that they would come with, but, excuse me. One thing I will say is that um, Hubble actually created these fixtures after they bought out Spalding Whiteway. And if you guys hadn't seen my last video, this is the Spalding Metropolitan 1000 that I did a video on. And this fixture is pretty cool and such, but it was made by Spalding, and obviously Spalding had also bought out Jocelyn, so these right here are the fixtures that came after the Spalding, so I definitely think it's a good time now that I've done a video of that to really just go over and uh, see how these fixtures compare to uh, Spalding's uh, fixtures. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put this one aside. And for part one today, we'll start with this fixture right here. So this is my Hubble RMA 250 watt Pulse Start Metal Halide Streetlight. Now, this fixture is pretty basic. Like I said, the Hubble fixtures don't really have a lot going on. But one thing I will mention is that it has a power door style uh, assembly. And we'll take a little bit of a closer look at that. But this fixture actually has another uh, model that's exactly like this, except that the, the lens is different. Now, for the higher wattage versions, usually you'll see a glass lens. And those versions are the RMG. Now. I'm not sure what R stands for, but I know that the e, that the M stands for medium. So this is Hubble's medium size fixture. But one thing I'll say is this fixture is actually probably more like a small Cobra head. Now I'll talk about it when I get into the next uh, Hubble fixture, but that fixture is the RLG and that L stands for large. So I don't know why they didn't call this the RSA or fixture because this actually is a small cobra head and um you'll kind of notice it when i'm actually reviewing it up close in just a second but it is a small cobra head 
But thought I'd just mention that little interesting bit. But yes, this is the RMA, and the A actually stands for the lens, which is acrylic. So now don't go too crazy. I, since I've mentioned that to you guys that this is a 250 watt pulse start light, this lens actually can't really handle the light intensity for uh, long periods of time on a metal 250 watt pulse start because it'll actually yellow it. But this fixture right here came off of eBay and it was actually stripped of its components. But when I got my other Hubble fixture, um, that fixture already had pulse start stuff in it. So I wanted to make this one pulse start as well, just so I could have it be the same and consistent like my other one. So don't get upset. Um, I'll try not to run this too much so that the lens can stay intact. But yeah, this fixture is pretty cool. Um, I don't exactly know um, what year this one is. I'd say this one's probably from the 90s as it has the um, high pressure sodium sticker on it. And I'll explain that in a second. Um, it has that nice golden um, metallic colored sticker. And HPS back then wasn't really labeled as yellow just yet. So that's probably when this, this um, Hubble RMA right here was actually made. But this is a pretty simplistic fixture, and let's go ahead and actually look at it a little bit more closely. So I went ahead and laid it down, and as you can see, it is actually very boxy, like the American Electric uh, 13 from the 70s. And I don't know if they were trying to copy that design, but it is extremely boxy, as you can see. Now, it doesn't look bad in that with this type of shape at all. It is very nice and the edges are very clean on it. So I do appreciate Hubble for making it look very slim and nice. Um, you can see on the door here it says Hubble and it's a very nice clean crisp mold. And that power door um, style thing and of course these came out in the early 80s and I'm, I'm guessing that you know they wanted to copy GE in a sense to, as to where they could have these uh, replaceable doors in case the components ever went bad. Obviously these fixtures weren't around much so it really didn't matter but you could never order uh, solid door versions of these so yeah that's pretty much um, how all their fixtures were. It was a standard for Hubble's uh, street lights but yeah yeah you can see it's just it's very boxy. Um, it's not really that exciting though I will say even though it is very nice looking it's pretty standard really in design. It's not really uh, catching my eye in any sense. But I'm gonna try to flip it on camera for you guys over. And just, yeah, you can see it's very boxy. And just not really much going on. It's not a super exciting fixture, but I will say it is a very nice fixture. But yeah, let's go ahead now. And since I'm actually looking at the top, um, this photo cell socket here, so, now Hubble's photo style sockets are extremely weird. I don't understand how this works and I'll kind of show you guys on the inside but I really don't know how to actually adjust this photo cell socket. Um, you'll notice on the inside that it's actually kind of uh, clipped into a clip that kind of stretches on either side. But you can undo it, you actually have to undo it from the inside and um, slide it upward and position it and then push it down. There's a cr kind of a clip type thing inside and I'll show you that in a minute. So you, they're really, uh, this adjustment is actually pretty static once you have it where it's at. You really can't move it again. But it is um, pretty nice. It's just a uh, simple plastic photo cell socket and it's actually finished really well. Um, like I said, even though this picture is pretty basic, um, Hubble really did a lot of commercial type, uh, ma did a lot and really like commercial type products, so their stuff is very commercialized and very nice. Um, right here you got some dots actually on the top. I don't know if that's for uh, leveling or not, but I'm assuming so, since it's pretty in line uh, horizontally and vertically with the top of the fixture. So yeah, pretty cool. And yeah, there's just, like I said, there's just not a lot going on out here. It's a very bland um, style, but let me go ahead and lay it down and I'll open it up for you guys. So you'll see here as of right now, um, actually how small this fixture is. So let me walk up to it. Yeah, you can see my feet look pretty large in comparison to the actual fixture. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and kind of just start with the power door itself. So to open up your power door, there's a little screw right 
right here. And basically you want to undo that screw. And then once it's undone, you have a latch right here. You want to press up on that. And then you can lift your door off. But before you take your assembly out, there's a little clip inside, as you can see right here. So you want to press out on those side tabs, and then it'll, that clip will slide right out. And then your door assembly's out. So yeah, I'll go ahead and set this aside. And we can kind of just continue to look at the fixture in general. So like I said, this is a power door um, assembly style fixture. So none of the components are actually mounted in here. All that's really going on in here is just some wire stuff, as you can see. But that clip right here, of course, connects to your ballast. And all these wires here, basically, you know, they just kind of splice together and go down into your terminal block that you can see right here. Now this isn't the original terminal block. Um, this um, this fixture never came with its terminal block as, like I said, this was stripped out. So I had to uh, put a Thomas and Betts uh, socket in, which luckily it actually lines up um, with the existing uh, screw, you know, these screw tap heads. So yeah, I went ahead and mounted that in um, the best way I could. And I connected some wires to those terminal blocks. So yeah, this is the type of terminal block that you got in here. But for the actual Hubble photo uh, terminal blocks, I know they mount um, somewhere up in here somewhere. Um, they're a little bit different in shape, I know, for sure. But I won't get into that too much as I don't know really that much. Um, as you can see, uh, you got the photo cell socket here. And like I said, there's this, uh, there's this tab thing here. And you can kind of see, but right there, and then right up in there, and then kind of hiding behind the wires right there, there's little clips. So if I take my fingers and actually push in on that, I might be able to actually push the photo cell socket out. But it kind of clips onto this little system here. Press on these little clips, these three little clips at the same time. It's a little bit hard to do on camera, but you can see... I just got it to click out. You can see it now it comes out like so. And basically, uh, this little clip here, of course, it's kind of static. It doesn't really move because you can see it's tied into there. Um, it kind of helps to lock it in place once you have it positioned. But yeah, basically, when you first start, you just want to position it wherever you want. And then you press those clips back down like so. And here it just clip, clicked back in. And yeah, you got your photo cell socket in your position, so that's kind of how you uh, reposition it. But for a one-time thing, you really can't do it, because once you have it clipped down like this, you really, you, you can't, so oh, I kind of did it, but it's because I'm forcing it. You really can't spin it. But one thing I will say about this photo cell socket, and I'll show you real quick, is it actually has spade terminals that go into the back of it. So you can see I just unplug that spade terminal right there. So if you ever do have to replace any wires or recrimp any terminals onto that photo cell socket, um, that's definitely an easy peasy. So I do appreciate that Hubble did put at least some spades on the photo cell, but as for the photo cell uh, swivel and uh, adjustment design, I'm not really a huge fan of this, but I guess that'll make new since this is original to their uh, design. Of course, up here you can see the slip fitter bolts, and it's basically um, just pretty simple. Um, there's no adjustment at all here, just some simple clamps, but they are made of stainless steel, and you got some really nice uh, bolts here. So yeah, pretty cool. And for some reason, right under the uh, right under this bracket here that holds the front door on, there's actually a piece of shielding cardboard. I'm assuming that's to keep heat out and stuff. So yeah, pretty nice. Um, if this was an older fixture, has gone through many more years of um, wear and tear, I'm sure this cardboard would probably be long gone. So um, I don't know if that's really a good idea that they put cardboard in there. That might have been kind of cheap, but yeah, that is there. So here is the door assembly. Now, like I said, um, this fixture was um, gutted, but if you hadn't noticed, um, there's this nice, lovely uh, 7 sticker. Oh, you can actually see it says 175. Um, I guess this person has some mercury vapor stuff in it, but this uh, ma nice gold uh, metallic uh, 7 sticker actually means that this was originally uh, 70 watts HPS. So pr that's pretty cool to know um, its history um, still as that's there. But yeah, um, I went ahead and wrote on it um, what the current wattage is and what type of lamp it uses. Um, I will actually eventually uh, replace this NEMA 
sticker with the proper one, but for right now, um, as I'm not really able to restore my fixtures too much, other than fix them, I'm not going to uh, worry about that at the moment. But yeah, you can see all the wiring here. Um, here is the original clip, again, that actually clips into the other side on the door, and I have all the wires spliced here. There is a little bit of a spaghetti mess kind of going on here, but I will say, um, <laughs> this ballast almost didn't fit, but luckily I uh, was able to get it to fit because I really wanted this to be a 250 watt pulse start as that wattage is actually pretty rare in pulse start, so yeah. But of course, since this isn't original, um, I will explain that this is a retrofit ballast made by a Shao can, I guess it says. You can kind of see it there, but I'll, and I'll zoom into that in a sec. So, but yeah, I went ahead and just remounted it in here, and it's really nice. It's a really nice, high-quality ballast. Um, really proud of uh, Shao, Shao Hagan, I think it's called. We're uh, making some nice HID stuff. But one thing that is at least cool, even though the components are not original to this fixture, is Hubble does make it very easy for uh, retrofitting. So um, the brackets here, as you can see, um, connect really well to the door assembly here. So they made it really nice um, for that purpose. But yeah, pretty cool. And I'll go ahead and position it this way. And let's go ahead and look at the sticker here on the ballast. So yeah, you can see it's made by... I think uh, Sao, or excuse me, I had said it wrong, uh, Saohagan, Saohagan, if I'm saying that wrong, uh, <laughs> please tell me in the comments below. I'm not really very good with modern ballast names, but yeah, you can see it's lamp type 250 watt, pulse start metal halide, and you can see the bulb type there, the M138 slash M153. Um, I will say, um, you can't put a regular uh, pulse start lamp in here because um, the arc tube won't support the uh, the pulse and it could actually damage the lamp. So make sure uh, that you actually use uh, this specific lamp type with it. I see that a lot with pulse start that um, people use the wrong uh, metal metal halide lamp. They'll put a regular metal halide lamp in it or a ceramic metal halide, and you cannot use it on here. I'm telling you, it'll um, probably either destroy the components or the bulb or blow up the bulb, so don't do that, especially with ceramic metal halide, so just make sure if you ever have pulse start that you're uh, running it with this specific type of lamp. But yeah, you can see this ballast is a multi-tap, of course, and you got some catalog information, blah blah blah, and a little wiring diagram to help you, so yeah, pretty happy with this ballast. Um, I really didn't need to use any of that. Um, the wires on these types of ballasts are actually labeled, so you can see common, um, bring it up here a little bit. You can see the voltage wires and igniter wires stuff. And if a lot of you guys aren't familiar with uh, Pulse Start Metal Halide, it's a lot like HPS in a sense where um, you have a transformer, capacitor, and an igniter as well. And HPS is very well known for um, utilizing an igniter as the bulb basically um, is pretty cold when it's um, being electrified. So to uh, get it started, they, uh, it gets sparked with an igniter. So Pulse Start is the same way it uses an igniter, and you can actually sometimes run HPS lamps off this type of stuff, which I will definitely not do because I don't know if I trust that. But yeah, the concept is basically the same. So yeah, even though it's not original, I am very satisfied with uh, this ballast assembly that's in here, and it's good quality. So yeah. So of course, as this is a power door style fixture, the um the front section um, opens separately, so you have this really nice little barn hinge here, as you can see. All you gotta do is pull it down a little bit. I'll drag the fixture back over, and then you open your door. And in this case, the door um well I guess it will come off. Um, <laughs> my this Hubble fixture has definitely seen maybe a little bit of better days. I'll try not to break. Go ahead and just set it back. Um, usually the doors on these, I will say, are not made to come off, but mine kind of does like to come off, so yeah, probably not the best. Um, I will say, I think the hook right here is actually a little bit uh, manufactured weird, so it's not really perfect at all. Um, <laughs> so that's probably uh, one of the downfalls of this um, fixture is that little cheapness there but everything else is pretty good here is the, so here is the front door section and to get your refractor out it's 
actually pretty simple, kind of. Um, you have these uh, bolts right here that undo these sliders. So really all you got to do is get some pliers and unsnug them a bit and you can slide these back and this will slide out. So, so I'll go ahead and show you guys this real quick. So I got some pliers here. I'm just going to kind of do that. Get a little bit loose and you can see now that slides back and this slides right out. So let's go ahead and look at that. So here is the acrylic refractor. Now I'm not a huge fan of acrylic refractors just because they are super super prone to yellowing. I much prefer uh, polycarbonate if it's going to be used on a high wattage uh, fixture, but um, I don't know if they ever made uh, polycarbonate versions of these lenses. Now, you'll think actually right off the bat that this looks like a General Electric M250 R2 um, lens. Now, that is not the case. Um, this is actually its own, um, Hubble's own a version of their small cobra head uh, plastic lens and it is very nice and very clean as you can see and most plastic refractors aren't but it has lots of nice little details you can see my hands very well through it and it's pretty much in good shape so it's very nice and flexible and very very durable so really really like it now the reason why I say it looks like a GE refractor is because of its design pattern but um, even though the design pattern on this actually in a way is identical to the GE M250 refractor this uh, refractor is actually the same exact shape as the Cooper OBZ plastic refractor and I don't really um, exactly have a good comparison I guess I could kinda show you real quick something so it definitely retains uh, more of a shape of this refractor and I have compared them before on my own time. Um, they are exactly the same in shape. So I got my Jocelyn MB121 here um, that I did a video on. Uh, this shape of this uh, glass refractor is also the same as that Hubble acrylic refractor. So it's definitely not the shape of a GE. It's the shape of either uh, this refractor here or my Cooper uh, OBZ here. So with that, uh, with that said, yeah, it's pretty interesting that they um, copied the shape of Cooper, but they did uh, copy the design of GE's uh, M250 refractor in um, regards to the pattern. But I think it makes it unique and special, and it is really, really cool. Now, if you're wondering if it has any um, company labeling or anything on it, um, it actually doesn't. Um, it's just a blank lens, but um, Hubble did uh, use these on their fixtures. So, yeah, pretty cool. Um, it's pretty basic, though. It's not, like, super unique or anything. But I do want to give Hubble uh, kudos for actually making this acrylic refractor really, really um, nice and uh clean and uh, finished well because a lot of the uh, other manufacturers who make refractors, um, Cooper is actually a good example, um, they make really crappy uh, acrylic refractors that just, even when they're new out of the box, they just, they're so easy to bust up because that's just how bad they are. So um, Hubble actually made a really good acrylic refractor for their fixture. So. Alright, so here is the inside of the reflector in ref uh, refractors assembly area. Um, here's the uh, instructions that actually came with my ballast here. Um, like I said, here is the uh, company who made it. I think they are still around. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but if they are, please let me know because I'd like to see if they actually still make ballasts and stuff. But yeah, that's uh, that instruction manual from that. And yeah, so here is the reflector assembly here for where your lamp goes. and. It's a pretty nice reflector. Now I'm not going to take it out, but it is screwed right here. But you can see um, Hubble did add some really, really nice refractor patterns. Um, so yeah, pretty nice uh, detailing there on the reflector. And you have this really nice felt uh, moisture absorbing gasket that they put on. And this one hasn't fallen off unlike some others. So I'm actually glad to see it's still there. Um, these are pretty prone to falling off just due to the adhesive um, melting away from heat. So yeah, but one thing I don't actually like about this Hubble fixture, and this is something that some other manufacturers uh, did as well, and um, actually something GE did, is the fact that the socket is inside the reflector and it's not mounted um, coming in, it's already inside. And I'll show you why real quick now. Here is uh, the lamp I'm going to be running in the fixture. This is a plus right Pulse Start Metal Halide uh, 250 watt lamp that I bought off 1000 Bulbs. It's a really, really good website to um, buy older HID lighting. 
but let me show you something real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw it in. And then we can take a little bit of a closer look at it in a sec. But you can kind of see that the arc tube is right about here and I already have this socket pushed all the way back. Now it'd be really pointless to adjust this and I'll show you right now to see if you can get better lighting distribution because the problem you're going to have is when you're doing so, you're pushing the arc tube. Just look how look how much you're pushing that lamp. I don't think I can pull it forward anymore. Ugh. There we go. So the problem that I'm already running into right now with this, and you can see, is number three is right here. I know you guys can see that. You can't adjust it to position three because the lamp already hits the end of the assembly. Now, with now, I realized that this fixture was originally a uh, 70 watt HPS, and the bulb would be probably about this long in size. So, you know, the same size as a 100 watt mercury lamp. But even so, it's kind of pointless to have your arc tube pushed all the way in the back, as this reflector is a two way ref reflector, basically trying to aim the light out this way. So to have the R2 pushed all the way back, none of the light's really going to be up towards the front enough to actually aim out correctly. So um, this actually, this design here, I would say is pretty bad and very flawed. Um, so in my opinion, um, with this type of assembly, I prefer to have it pushed all the way back. So the arc tube is for the most part in the middle and you can see I have it pushed so far back that it's actually past position one here. But yeah, even so, um, even as crappy as this adjustment um, set assembly is, I really don't prefer to have any adjustments in streetlights anyway. I always feel like it's important to have the arc tube fixed in one spot as, you know, that's probably the best light distribution you're going to get. But yeah, if you really want to do any adjusting with the um, lamp. Um, it's kind of useless in this fixture, so definitely one of the weakest points, I'd say, um, with this Hubble RMA. And when we get into the Hubble R RLG in part two, you're gonna, you guys are gonna see the same issue. So um, yeah, just, just a little bit of a warning for you. But yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that. This is a terrible design uh, feature right here, and it's just, it's just wrong. It's just all sorts of wrong. But yeah, other than that, um, everything else in here is pretty nice. Like I said, the reflector's good. The gasket material is really, really nice as well. But yeah, I hate this. So yeah, sorry, Hubble. <laughs> and one more thing, actually, to mention real quick um, is the bracket here for um, the do front door assembly. Now, like I said, these clips uh, uh, didn't really hold the door on very well, so um, that design portion actually is kind of bad too. But I will say that um, the metal that actually this is made up of is pretty nice and very uh, thick and finished well. So yeah, pretty cool. All right, I got the fixture back together, but but before I forget, um, let me go ahead and just show you guys uh, a couple things real quick. Um, here is the photo cell that I will assign to this fixture. It is just a newer a 2018 green um, uh, Fisher Pierce SunTech photo cell. Oh, or yeah, it does say 2018. I know sometimes they say a different number on the top, so I'll go ahead and put that on. The fixture. Of course it is dark outside so unfortunately when I go to turn that on it won't really do much uh, good. But yeah, um, here's the lamp. Of course I was uh, kind of complaining about the lamp position but I never got to show you guys the lamp. So yeah, like I said it is 250 watts pulse start metal halide. It is a plus right lamp brand bulb. Pretty cool. And this one actually just says M138 slash uh, I guess O or zero um, I don't really know what that is but of course M138 that's uh, one bulb type you can run in this fixture and um, this pulse start lamp is a little bit cooler actually it is a um, protected tube now sometimes these pulse start lamps can actually explode so um, fair warning if you guys are ever testing these in open air um, just keep in mind that if you strike it wrong or put the wrong voltage on it this actually has um, a very high chance of exploding um, obviously if you get one with the protected tube which does cost more money but I just got it because I can afford it um, that will hopefully prevent that but yeah the tube on um, this arc tube is actually very pr prone to exploding and I've seen some of these bulbs on 1000 watts the whole bulb just blows up and all you got left is the base here 
But yeah, um, pretty nice lamp. Uh, Plus Rite does make some really good lamps. Um, I've gotten some lamps by them before. I've gotten a 150 watt Pulse Start for my New York City OBZ. I'm sure you guys have seen that video. So yeah, pretty awesome. Um, I really do like their lamps. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in my fixture and run it for you guys. All right, so the Hubble RMA is all set up. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the lights off real quick and kind of see a nice little red light. That's my OB20 with its red lamp. All right, so this is my late 90s Hubble RMA 250 watts pulse start metal halide in one, two, three. You can see had a little bit of a quick flickering there, but that's a quick igniter starting up. So yeah, um, this is a quick fire up light since it's pulse start, so it shouldn't take long to warm up, but yeah, let's watch it. All right, well, we are definitely at full brightness, and I'm noticing my camera <laughs> is having an extremely hard time uh, focusing right now. I guess the light is just super intense. But it is 250 watts uh, pulse start, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead now and flip it on its side. And I don't know if you guys can actually hear any noise from it. Um, there is a minor, minor humming, but it's a newly ballasted fixture, so it's very, very quiet. Um, yeah. Since it's a uh, 250 watts pulse start, um, the amount of light it's giving off is like plenty of light, and it's just it's so pure and white. It's it's not like mercury vapor at all. It's just a pure white light. I'll kind of bring the camera up a bit. Yeah, it almost looks like daylight in here. That's the uh, ceiling right there that I'm showing you guys. Oh, whew. there's dust on my camera. There we go. Yeah, very very bright light. Um, yeah. You can see just how bright it is. The camera just cannot look at it. I can't look at it. It's really intense, but I'll go ahead and pan the camera up towards it. You can faintly see that really nice uh, arc tube in there, and you can see how beautiful the uh, refractor looks against all that light. So pretty nice, and you can come back here a little bit and see all that uh, fixture beauty. So yeah, pretty cool. There's not really much going on with the pattern. Oh yeah, you can definitely see the lamp right there. You can actually see the, the outside of it. So again, kudos to Hubble for making such a really, really nice acrylic refractor. They could have just made it so cheap, but they uh, went the extra mile. So I really appreciate them for doing that. Um, yeah, so pretty nice. And I'm actually feeling kind of hot just standing next to this thing and I'm sure the acrylic refractor is too so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing off all right well that was my Hubble 250 watts pulse start metal halide RMA fixture so I hope you guys enjoyed um, this little simple fixture here and yeah um, I will definitely keep it in my collection it's definitely a modern obscure fixture and even though it's not the most exciting thing in the world, I do respect um, the brand in which it was made from and just the fixture itself. It's it's really, it really did try to be a good street light. So I definitely really um, like this fixture a lot. So yeah, um, thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, please like and subscribe if you guys um, are interested in seeing more. Um, of course, in part two, we will go over this Hubble RLG here. So yeah, please stay tuned for that and I hope you guys have a good day. See you soon. Goodbye.